What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. If you're watching this, it is Monday. Oh, actually today is Christmas, so Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate it. I am actually in Aruba, but I did want to make sure to get a video up for you guys. Um, just real quick, while I'm on vacation, I used to be like the kind of guy that like I would stress out about like my fitness and my diet, and I would almost like not enjoy my trips because I was too worried about like a week of like not making progress in the gym. I'm no longer like that. I learned to realize that one week is nothing. I'm gonna do some light workouts, and if I don't, I don't. Uh, I'll track my diet moderately, make sure I don't eat too crazy. But besides that, I'm gonna enjoy my time because what's the point of doing this if you can't have fun, you know? But anyway. Uh, what I wanted to do, what I'm going to show you guys is my, my leg workout, but before that I get a lot of questions on like what I do for warm-ups. Um, I showed you a lacrosse ball like two videos ago. Uh, that's what I do on some off days for like just like deep tissue stuff. But what I'm about to show you is the stuff that I actually do as my like warm-up before I go to the gym. So I do this at home because my gym is like five minutes away. If you don't live that close, it takes you a little while to get to the gym. You might want to do it at the gym, but it's only like a few minutes, so like I do it here and then I go. Um, but I'm going to show you some of the moves that I do um, before all my workouts. Also, just bear in mind, I don't live in a photography studio. The lighting's not very good here, and I'm filming this by myself. And some of the things I'm doing, I'm going to be like on the floor and weird angles. So I'm, I'm sorry if the lighting or the angles are weird. I'm, I'm doing my best to show you what I do. So the first thing I do are these wall slides. I do four sets of ten on these, and I do them on my upper body days and my lower body days. Um, for upper body days, they're definitely helpful because they help. They definitely help me at least with my overhead press lockout. Used to have really bad mobility. Still don't have great mobility, but it's better than it was. At least it's a lot better than it was. And for squats on leg day, it definitely helps my shoulders get loose to really get under the bar without uh, without really any pain. So I do that force to the ten before every workout. So this next one, I don't even know what you want to call it, but this is what I do. I do one set of fifteen of these. And honestly, if you're not gonna do all of these, this is the one that I find the most beneficial. You really feel an entire stretch in like your whole back. You can also hold it at the top for like a couple seconds. And if you're gonna just choose one, this is the one that definitely gets me the loosest for like squats and everything and deadlifts. So this is my favorite one, honestly. Uh, I don't know if it has a name or not, but I've seen some people do it and I just do it. Again, I don't know if any of these have names, so I'm just gonna like show you what I do and why I do it. Um, this, basically I just lay on the floor, put my knees together, and I twist, and I do about like five to like eight reps on each side, and you're going to feel like your lower back crack, and it feels really nice. Uh, after I do that, I just jump into, again, I don't know what these are called, but I just, sw like you swing your foot over, I don't want to kick anything, I don't usually do it right here, I'm just trying to film it, so. Basically, swing your foot over, and you're gonna feel a nice stretch in your entire back. Also, right here, like your glute, your um, your hip, definitely opens up everything. So that's this is probably those two are like my my second favorites after that first one I showed you. Then afterwards, I do some I don't want to call it yoga, but I guess they're like yo not, not like yogish yogish poses. I just do like a stretch like that. Kind of do on each side. You really feel your lat and your entire back stretch out. So I'll go there. Um, then I'll just go down here as well. And I'll do like three of those, just making sure I get like on each side, like that. And it's very good. You'll stretch out your entire back that way. And then just the last one I've been doing is for my wrists. So I've just been putting my wrist like here. Try to like get them like that. And I kind of just hold it for 30 seconds and I've noticed that it helps a little bit with wrist mobility on like gripping stuff and on squats so this is a newer one that I started doing and I've just been doing it I don't know if I can't tell you it's the best thing in the world but it's definitely helped a little bit 
So that's all I do before every workout. I don't claim to be like a mobility expert or anything. There's definitely people that know more and do way more mobility stuff than I do. But then there's also a lot of people that don't do anything. Personally, I work out like first thing in the morning. So I do find that I'm much tighter in the morning than if I were to go in the afternoon. So I do think it is important. People ask if you should stretch before or after your workout. I don't stretch before my workout. If you're going to stretch, do it after your workout. I do it sometimes, but honestly, I'm lazy. But if you're going to stretch, do it after your workout. You could do like mobility stuff like you just saw before your workout. You could try some of the moves I showed you. You could look up other people. Like Matt Ogus has a whole uh, mobility thing, but I mean, the stuff that he does, I don't, I, don't have, I don't have time to be doing an hour of mobility each day. So that's what I do. Uh, and now I'm going to show you my latest leg hypertrophy workout. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the workout. Here you see those nice two and a half pound plates at the end of the hack squat because as you know, progressive overload, getting stronger over time is the key to growth. Um, typically what I've been doing on these hypertrophy workouts, I don't really have a set progression on the weights. I basically started with a, a weight on a specific rep range. So I, I've been liking to do like 10 reps on these hack squats. So I started with the three plates and then after a few workouts, kind of started to feel a little bit easy. So I just decided to put on five pounds total. Uh, I did this last week and it was actually a little bit difficult. So I did it again this week and it was a lot easier. So basically whenever I feel like the weight's getting a little bit easier on these hypertrophy workouts, I'll bump up the weight, but I don't have like a set amount. Like each week I'm gonna bump it up a certain amount. On the strength workouts, I am trying to do that, but on the hypertrophy, I'm really just going by feel. So here I started out with hack squats. Um, I did four sets of 10 with a drop set at the end. I did not pick, I did not show the drop set. Um, I actually put this workout um, on my Instagram story live as I was doing it. And I was amazed at how many people actually asked me what a drop set was. I kind of thought it was just like common knowledge, but then I like thought back and I'm like, well, I didn't know what a drop set was when I started lifting. So if you don't know what a drop set is, it's basically after your last set of an exercise, you drop the weight and you do more reps without resting in between. And I like doing them, it's a great intensity technique. It's just a good way to get more reps in at a higher intensity without really adding any extra time or any extra exercises in the gym. So I recommend doing them on, on um, hypertrophy workouts. You might not, you don't really wanna do them on strength days necessarily, but I definitely like doing them on these hypertrophy workouts. And even though I did not show them on this video, I did do them on the hack squats. And I think I did them on every exercise that you're going to see besides the Romanian deadlifts, which are coming up after this. Um, as far as the leg press, I did four sets of 12. And like I said, a drop set. Um, so it was four sets on each of this, the hack squat and the leg press, uh, 10 reps, 12 reps. And I basically just been following on these hypertrophy workouts between 10 and 15 reps, whatever I really feel like doing. So I've been going a little bit higher up on the leg press, a little bit lower rep on the hack squat, but a couple for a couple of weeks, I did do a little bit higher reps on the hack squat as well. So like I said, I'm really just trying not to be too rigid with these hypertrophy workouts, I'm trying to have a little bit more um, leeway to enjoy it a little more because I find that once I start to like really once I start to like try to follow a very specific progression plan, a very specific workout, I start to lose interest and it gets very boring. So I am trying my best at least to be a little bit more like uh, free with it. Um, but that's, that's really the mindset I've been going into these workouts with. Um, so after the leg press, I moved on to the dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. Look at this angle of my, my butt's right in your face. Um, I was doing these with a barbell for a while, never really liked the barbell. I always kind of felt like I didn't lower it down properly and watching this, I don't love my form here either, but if I had to choose between dumbbells and a barbell, I do like the dumbbells better. I feel like you get a better range of motion on them and I happen to feel them a little bit better, um, but you could do them with barbells as well. It's a great exercise. I do think these are the best hamstring exercise. Uh, they're better than leg curls. They're better. I feel them more in my hamstrings, at least, than glute ham raises. Um, so I definitely recommend doing these for hamstrings. Um, you're gonna, I do like curls as well, but I feel like those are more of a finisher. These are definitely more of like a main hamstring movement and glutes as well. Uh, here we move on to the seated calf raise. I always make sure, I, I take calves twice a week. I usually do one seated um, calf raise like this, and then I do standing on my strength days. If you don't have a standing calf raise machine or a seated one, 
people ask me what they could do instead. You could do calf raises on a leg press. Uh, those work pretty well as well. Uh, I have a lot of calf machines, so I don't feel that I don't need to do that, but that's another option you have. And then after that, I just finish off with a superset of leg extensions for 15 reps and leg curls for three sets of 15 reps. And just going back to the calf raises, I did four sets of 12 on them with the drop set, and the Romanians, I did three sets of 10 on those. So finish up with the leg extensions, like I said. Um, people ask, like, are these bad for your knees? Do I have to do them? Honestly, these are probably the most useless exercise you could do for legs. I don't actually do them for, like, any real benefit. I kind of just look at it as, like, I'm out of breath after my leg workout, and I kind of just use it in between leg curls to, like, catch my breath and just finish off with a pump. You don't need to do them. You can do them. I don't think they're going to be bad for your knees, honestly, as long as your knees are healthy. But if you're worried, just don't do them because if you think you're going to hurt your knees, the benefit you're going to get isn't, isn't really worth um, getting injured. So... That's the whole leg workout. So if you guys like the video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm in Aruba, so check out my story on Instagram to see what I'm doing every day. And I'll see you guys when I get back. Thanks for watching.